blessed was glorious, the angel of days, almighty, victorious, thy great name we praise. Unresting, unhasting, and silent as light, nor wanting, nor wasting, thou rulest in might. Thy justice like mountains, thy soaring above, thy clouds which are fountains of goodness and love. Cool life thou givest to both great and small, in all life thou livest the true life of all. We blossom and flourish as leaves on the tree, and win and perish, but not change and see. Great Father of glory, your Father of light, thine angels adore thee, all veiling their sight. O Lord, we would render, O help us to see. Is only the splendor of light hideth thee. Immortal, invisible, God only wise, enlightening, accessible, hid from our eyes, most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of days, almighty, victorious. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and also with you. Well, welcome one and all. It's great to be together. Even though we're not gathered around the same table physically, we are gathered around the same table at this moment in time. The Christmas season has entered and we will shortly be entering towards Lent. But today we will be exploring our relationship with Jesus. It's easy to say that we pray, but do we really make the time? Do we just go through the motions? Well, today is a day when we can recommit ourselves from the beginning of this service to become praying people. And in doing so, we can start by confessing our sins together because we know that we get things wrong and we are all in need of God's forgiveness. God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus who died for us, Forgive us all that is past, and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so, forgiven people, together, as one, transformed by the forgiveness of God. We sing of God's glory. Image of invisible God, creator and sustainer of all. Attend. Righteous King who calls me his friend, the Prince who offers peace without end. Thank you for your perfect love. 
and it's you, O oh Lord. You're all that I could ask for, and in you, O oh Lord, I find the deepest joy, fountain of life, ocean of mercy and peace. And it's you, O oh Lord, who gives me strength to follow, and in you, O oh Lord, is grace for every day, boundless in love. Of heaven on earth. Therefore, I will not be afraid. Though mountains fall and rivers may rage, I'm safe within the city you've made. Thank you for your perfect love. And it's you, O oh Lord. You're all that I could ask for, and in you, O oh Lord, I find the deepest joy, fountain of life, ocean of mercy and peace. And it's you, O oh Lord, who gives me strength to follow, and in you, O oh Lord, it's grace for every day, boundless in love, fullness of heaven.
throne. My eyes to your throne. I will trust you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us a reverence for all creation and respect for every person, that we may mirror your likeness in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The reading is taken from Proverbs chapter 8, verses 1 and 22 to 31. Does not wisdom call, and does not understanding raise her voice? The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago I was set up, at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths I was brought forth, when there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth, when he had not yet made earth and fields, or the world's first bits of soil. When he established the heavens, I was there, when he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned the sea to its limit, so that the waters might not transgress his command when he marked out the foundations of the earth. Then I was beside him like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and delighting in the human race. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading is taken from Colossians, chapter 1, verses 15 to 20. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel comes from John chapter 1, beginning to read at verse 1. 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of the blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, what a week this has been. We were overjoyed one day to hear the wonderful news that the human ingenuity which created the COVID vaccine was better than people had imagined and may not only protect, but stop transmission of the virus. That gave us so much to be thankful for, so much to pray about. And then on another day, we had more to pray for, for we heard about the death of Captain Sir Tom Moore, a man who gave in the best way that he could to support our NHS. It was and is right and proper that he is applauded for all that he did in bringing the nation together and instilling within each and every one of us a sense of hope, of pride and of perseverance. Yet a single minute's clap is not enough for such a man. It is right that when people bring a nation together that they are honoured and he had honours bestowed upon him. Happily, I say, they are now considering a statue of him so that he can be remembered for what he has done and will do, for what he has achieved and will achieve for so many. Yet he didn't do that much, some will say. He was just an old man who walked up and down with his frame. Lots of people do that. And they're right. And yet, in this case, he did it selflessly for the needs of others. He set an example which we all should follow. When the first lockdown came, can you remember how generous people became and how they all wanted to help each other? The lockdown was the sort of opportunity for us to stop and have a reset on our lives. Many of us said, I hope it never goes back to the way it was before. We had great ideas, great dreams, great ambitions. Well, did we achieve them? Did we stay generous? Did we revert to our old selves the moment life came crashing in around us once again? Jesus asks change of us, but all too often we slip back into our lives and don't give him the time or space that is needed to build a relationship. A relationship that is more than a fleeting moment on a Sunday. A relationship that is more than a dream of what could have been. A relationship that is more than a distant memory of what we vaguely remember Jesus did to change things for the good. And so we build a statue to Captain Sir Tom Moore, not to venerate him, but to remember who he was, who he is, and what he stood for. Honesty, decency, care for others, self-sacrifice, humility, and the list goes on. It's so easy to forget. We forgot our promises from the first lockdown. So we don't want to forget what he and we have achieved, do we? 
The first words of the Bible are, in the beginning, God. Only in Hebrew, the word for beginning is the same as they use for head. St. Paul, writing to the Christians in Colossae, played a word game listing all the possible meanings of head and applying them to Jesus. A head is a portrait painted on canvas or carved in marble. So Jesus is the image of the invisible God. A head is the origin, so Jesus is the origin of creation. A head comes first, so Jesus is the first cause of all that followed after. A head is a leader, so Jesus is the leader of the church, which is his body. The head of the family is the firstborn child of the Father, so Jesus was the first to be reborn from the tomb at his resurrection. The trouble is that humour is untranslatable, and it is doubtful that anyone but a Jew like Paul could fully understand the joke in these. So let's concentrate on the first pun. A head is a carved or painted portrait. So Jesus is the image of the invisible God. God was the creator of the visible universe, so he must have existed before it came into being. Therefore, God is not located in the universe, so he must be invisible. Yet as humans find it almost impossible to think of an invisible being larger than the universe, let alone speak to him, but God wants to hold a conversation with us so as he can tell us that he loves us. So he hit on a brainwave for entering into the visible world in the form of a human being, Jesus Christ, who would fully reveal God's character, albeit in a miniature form. So Jesus is the portrait of God to help us imagine the God we have never seen. There have been many portraits of Jesus in paint and in prints, in stone or in CGI. But as none of the artists saw the living Jesus, these are artistic images of a mental image formed by the artist's imaginations. These are a good starting point, but if you're going to hold a conversation with the living Christ, you need to use your own imagination and think of Jesus as a warm, living human being standing just a few feet from you. Have you tried to do that? Well, the first problem is, what nationality or ethnicity would you choose? Jesus was a first century Jew. But can you imagine what that means? Many paintings of Jesus represent him as a man from the same area as the artist. So Italians painted him as a black-haired, olive-skinned Italian. British children's books show him as a fair-haired, blue-eyed Englishman. And this is good if it helps you to become his friend. But you must never let a trace of racial prejudice creep into your mind by thinking that Jesus was not like them, meaning the people you hate. An English minister visited a theological college in China and asked why all the pictures of Jesus on the walls showed him as a blonde man with fair skin. And the principal replied that these were the only type in print. The Englishman pointed out that in the 1930s, many pictures had been painted of Jesus with slanted eyes in classical Chinese clothes. In fact, they are still being produced in Hong Kong. You mean, asked the surprised principal, that Jesus was not a white man like you, nor a yellow man like me, but a brown man from the country in between? Yes, was the reply. It would be most helpful if you think of him as a yellow man in a modern dress. The same Englishman was speaking to an up and coming sculptor in London who had been helping to make a bust to the Queen. The secret, she said, is to imagine you are the person whose image you are making like a method actor imagining that they are the character they act, he asked, and she nodded in agreement. So when I pray to Jesus, 
the image of the invisible God, he thought. I should imagine Jesus as being just like me, only without all my faults and with many virtues that I haven't yet acquired. Me as I could become if I gave Jesus a free hand. I could talk in my imagination to a person like that. Then I should be talking to the image of the invisible God. This week, why not take your time to build up your relationship with Jesus? I promise you it will be a step, a change, a journey that you will never regret. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In faith, let us pray to God our Father in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and in the power of the Holy Spirit. God of love, we pray for the life of your church throughout the world. May every congregation be a community of love and every Christian a witness to your grace. Renew all who worship in our communities that we may be a living fellowship in your spirit and serve our neighbourhood. Your kingdom come, your will be done. God of mercy, we pray for the life of the world. And we pray for those who exercise power. Show us how to live as members of the human family, to reject the ways of war, to bear each other's burdens and to work together for justice and peace. Your kingdom come, your will be done. God of compassion, we pray for those who are ill or anxious at home or in hospital. We pray for those whose lives are filled with fear and despair. In the quietness, we lift before the Lord those known to us who are on our hearts and minds. Draw near with your saving love and bring healing and hope. Your kingdom come, your will be done. God of glory, we rejoice in the communion of saints. We remember all who have faithfully lived and all who have died in Christian hope, especially those who have brought us closer to you. Help us to follow their example and bring us with them into the fullness of your eternal joy. Your kingdom come, your will be done. 
Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so to our peace. The grace and goodness of God go with you and surround you with glory. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh, as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us 
and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of John, Mark, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Perfect wisdom in 
Let us pray. God, our creator, by your gift, the tree of life was set at the heart of earthly paradise and the bread of life at the heart of your church. May we who have been nourished at the table on earth be transformed by the glory of the Saviour's cross and enjoy the delights of eternity. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Amen. Our notices. To let you know that there will be an Ash Wednesday service online on Wednesday the 17th of February. We are aware that this year the usual ashing is not able to take place, but we're going to see what we can do instead. But we ask you to make time for this service in your diaries as it marks the start of a special time in the church's year. Both of our churches will be holding an online Lent course this year entitled Caring for Creation. If you're able to join us, then it would be wonderful. It will run on a Monday evening for five weeks from the 22nd of February, starting at 7 p.m. and will run for an hour. And my email is down below here, as usual. So if you want to join the course, please let me know and I'll send a link to you. Well, that's all the notices for this week. But before our final blessing, let's sing together our final hymn.
The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Our Father everlasting, the uncreated one. God Almighty Through your Holy Spirit Conceiving Christ the Son Jesus our Savior I believe in God our Father I believe in Christ the Son I believe in the Holy Spirit our God is three in one I believe in the resurrection That we will rise again For I believe in the name of Jesus Our judge and our defender Forgiveness is in you Descended into darkness You rose in glorious life Forever seated high And I believe in God our Father I believe in Christ the Son I believe in the Holy Spirit name